Hi and welcome back to a new video. We recently built a pretty nice AMD Threadripper workstation for Misha for his new Vulkan Alpha project and then he quickly contacted me afterwards and said he needs three additional PCs for video rendering because you know he's doing a lot of videos around the Nürburgring. And then he told me that he has a budget of about 5000 euro for each PC where I said that is way too much, you don't need that much anymore these days for a simple video rendering rig. So I configured something that is much more price performance oriented and we're going to build these PCs today. Before I picked the components, I asked Misha which tools he's using and he's only running DaVinci Resolve, not Adobe Premiere, which made it fairly easy. So for that kind of scenario, I would personally always go for an AMD CPU with a higher core count, but not too much. Like 7950X or even AMD Threadripper is usually not worth it. Like, I picked 7900X because from my experience that is pretty much the sweet spot. If you pay more and get more cores, you only shave off a little bit of rendering time in the end. So you might reduce it from like 10 to 9 minutes in the end. But I mean, as long as you don't render 20 videos a day, it doesn't really matter if you once a day have to wait for 9 minutes or 10 minutes. So price performance wise, it just makes much more sense to go for a CPU like this. Even an 8 core CPU would be absolutely fine. I'm using the B650E gaming Wi-Fi, CPU is already placed in the socket. I mainly picked the motherboard, even though this is technically already overkill, but it has a very good VRM, so during the rendering phase, it definitely won't overheat, for sure it won't. And it also has Wi-Fi, because I know that Misha is going to work over Wi-Fi. For memory, I picked those 96 gigabyte kits from Crucial. It's dual 48, 5600 mega transfers only, but it's still more than enough for a video rendering rig. Because I recently did a lot of testing, especially for gaming around like mid memory frequency and high memory frequency, different kind of latency settings. And especially I had to learn for video rendering, it doesn't really matter at all. You might shave off like two or three seconds, but you might pay 50% more for the memory kit. That's probably not worth it. So that's something I had to learn. And if you also want to learn something on a daily basis, you might want to look into Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing place where you can learn by doing. So not just the boring learning lessons you had at school, but interactive lessons where you can improve and learn new skills such as physics, data analysis, programming and also very relevant these days AI. Large language models are a huge thing right now, but do you know how it actually works? Understand the importance of data training or how a LLM is tuned by not just reading but actually trying and doing. And don't be afraid by trying new topics because Brilliant will guide you through different levels to improve your problem solving and also critical learning skills. And I can tell you from my own experience, it makes a lot more sense to learn every day for a few minutes rather than learning too much at once. So it's your time to try out Brilliant for 30 days for free. Click on the link in the description below and also enjoy 20% off an annual premium subscription. Regarding the M.2 SSD installation, you just have to know that this slot and the top PCIe slot are sharing lanes. So avoid populating both unless there is a specific application where you need all of that. So that's why I will use the top one and this M.2 slot right here. For the three systems, I bought six of those Alexa NM790 SSDs with two terabyte each. Price performance wise right now, that is one of the very good options. And especially with two SSDs in each system, he can split up like the system itself with maybe necessary tools and everything and a second one for additional data. Already mounted both of the SSDs, removed the protective film on the heat sinks. Going to mount these. And memory sticks, also in place. I have to say, I also like it without RGB. The systems will be air-cooled. I picked a Thermalrite Peerless Assassin 120SE cooler simply because price performance wise, it's just a very good solution. I paid around 36 euro per cooler and especially for what it is, you know. Typically, if you do video editing, most of the time you're going through the timeline, do some cuts here and there and during the playback, it's just mostly the GPU that is loaded and not the CPU and if you're rendering out the video during maybe like eight to 10 minutes uh, time, this is more than enough cooling wise. And it's just much more user friendly and it will not fail over a long time pre period versus maybe the risk of a pump failing in an AIO. Cryo sheet on the CPU, same reason as why I didn't go with an AIO with the pump, because this won't fail and Misha will never have to replace or like repaste anything underneath the CPU cooler. 
Also, when it comes to the GPU, you don't need an RTX 4090 these days for a little bit of video editing. You know, even in my system, usually I'm editing 4K with a 60 FPS and I'm technically using a 2080 Ti. And this card is about twice as fast as 4070 Ti Super. So yeah, that's still more than enough. Also, such a RTX 4070 Ti Super is not such a heavy chunk as an RTX 4090, which will make transporting much easier because I eventually have to ship those systems and make sure they arrive in one piece. Also, 12 volt high power on these won't be an issue. The power consumption is not that high. But first, I will pre-assemble everything three times, and then also do BIOS flash and then also install Windows three times. For the case, I decided to go with the Be Quiet Shader Base 800 and I just wanted to put the bundle inside and then something fluffy decided to go into the case. So Makita, maybe we have to keep this as a cat bed or maybe not. You know the nice thing about those simple air-cooled systems is also how easy they are to build and also how quick. If you just take a little bit of time and uh, just relax during building, it takes maybe about an hour to build a system like that. Uh, the only thing I still have to do is add the PSU and finish the cable management. Also going to use a Be Quiet for the PSU, picked a Pure Power 12M with 1000 Watt. I know this is technically overkill for this kind of configuration with an AMD Ryzen CPU and a 4070 Ti Super. But if Misha ever wants to change to maybe a stronger CPU because there's still CPUs coming for the socket and also a different GPU for the future, then this PSU would certainly be able to handle it. So far, so good. The only thing I want to highlight is that yeah, in this combination with this PSU and case, even though it's the same manufacturer, the 24 pin cable is quite short. It is really a bit of a stretch to get it in there. So yeah, it, sh it should be maybe five centimeters longer. Otherwise, yeah, really on the edge. 12 volt high power cable, also not beautiful, but this way I don't have to bend it as aggressively as rooting over the GPU. So I prefer this one. Um, doesn't look as nice, but uh, yeah, should just work. All the systems are so far ready to go. I configured everything like the fan curves of both case fans and also of the CPU cooler. So it's really quiet while editing. You can see even now it's uh, doing the video playback and now we can take a look at how much resources this actually takes. In DaVinci Resolve, you can see that's the timeline and if I just fast forward between different video clips, those are video clips I took with 4K resolution, so you can see, yeah, for daily video editing, what you need is that this playback here at good quality is working without any kind of issues, like without any kind of stuttering. But you can see this is fully smooth, and while doing that, we can also check how much resources this takes up or what kind of components it's loading. You can see during this 4K playback, CPU is sitting at about 60 degrees Celsius. Package power is between 70 and 80 Watt of the CPU and the GPU is also not that much loaded. See peak 50 degrees Celsius between 40 and 60 watt uh, GPU load. So just the video playback alone doesn't take up that many resources. The only thing where you might need more is memory. So if you load longer videos into the, the system, then you might need maybe 30 to 50 gigabyte, depending on the size of your video files and how many you load into the program. But you can see just with these few video files, it only takes up 10 gigabyte of system memory right now. So there is still a lot of reserve. Just as an example, this would be an 11 minutes long YouTube video, 4K, the same as I'm shooting my videos. Overall, this would take about six minutes to export. And we see that CPU is at about 88 degrees Celsius. This is because I picked a fan curve that is yeah, very low speed because the PC even in this state stays very quiet. There is still a lot of headroom for yeah, CPU fan curve. It, if it would hit above 90 degrees Celsius, then the fan would spin a lot faster. But I think in this state, even then, the PC can stay quiet. And if we scroll down to the GPU, we can see there is still not much going on. So this system will have a lot of reserves, even for video editing. If we go into Task Manager, check memory, we see only 12 gigabytes are used for this type of video export and the CPU is only loaded to about 60%.
So much about this video, I hope that with this video you will realize that you don't need to spend so much money on video editing rigs these days. Even this is much more than you usually need, so you could definitely get a good video editing rig these days for maybe 1,500 euro. You could uh, go for a little bit less graphics power, maybe an 8-core CPU if you want to, a smaller motherboard, a little bit less memory, and it would still work perfectly fine even for 4K videos. All right, thanks for tuning in. Till next time, bye-bye.